Last week, Marjorie Greene and Lauren Boebert got into a spat on the House floor, and on Friday, the Freedom Caucus possibly voted to expel her. And today, Marjorie Taylor Greene is speaking out about her belief that her television is spying on her. Is all of this a coincidence? Mm, I think not. But for those unfamiliar with the details of the story, uh, let's start at the very beginning here, because Marjorie Taylor Greene accused Lauren Boebert of copying her for the dumbest reason imaginable, which led to a spat on the House floor that everyone saw and some Republicans heard, and it was apparently very ugly. As the Daily Beast reports, the angry exchange came as the two lawmakers have been swiping at each other over their competing resolutions to impeach President Joe Biden, but tensions came to a head on Wednesday after Boebert leveraged a procedural tool to force a vote on her own impeachment resolution within days, undercutting Green, who had offered her own resolution, but not with the procedural advantage of forcing a vote. According to two of the sources, Green then stood up and challenged that Boebert copied my articles of impeachment, to which the Colorado lawmaker fired back that she hadn't even read Green's resolution. Quote, I heard Marjorie call Boebert a bitch right to her face. One GOP lawmaker said, granted anonymity by the Daily beast to speak freely about the argument quote okay marjorie we're through bobert then said shrugging her shoulders with bobert's back turned green responded we were never together ouch this reminds me of the movie Dumb and Dumber when Harry and Lloyd were fighting because they both fell in love with the same woman, but in the end, it didn't matter because she was married anyway, so neither of them would get her. This is the political equivalent of that but somehow literally more dumb than Dumb and Dumber. Both of them introduced a symbolic impeachment resolution against Biden that McCarthy himself has said it's not going to happen. Yet they're fighting over something that neither of them are going to get in the end. It's just genuinely amazing to watch. I think we need a Dumb and Dumber remake with both of these two legends. Now, they both confirmed the exchange to the press, and um, here's what they said. She basically copied my articles and then introduced them and then changed them to a privileged resolution. So, of course, I, I support them because they're identical to mine. They're basically copied. Congresswoman Green claims you copied her resolution. Yeah, I'm not in middle school. Can you comment on the report that she cursed at you on the floor? I, like I said, I'm not in middle school. Now, I can confirm she's indeed not in middle school because that would be far too advanced for the both of them. But after they both spoke to the press, Marjorie Green spoke to Semaphore and made um, another statement that was pretty shocking to me. Um, it's about an allegation surrounding uh, both of them. So Green said that at one point in the fight, parts of which were caught from a foreign video, Bobert accused the Georgia lawmaker of accidentally spitting on her lip. <laughs> I'm just I'm just imagining them <laughs> arguing on the floor and Marjorie's calling her a bitch and Bobert is like, did you just accidentally spit on my lip? Like, <laughs> I just I love it. I love it so much. I'm almost crying. This is so fucking stupid. Now, after that, after they both spoke with multiple press outlets about the incident, Marjorie accused Bobo of leaking the story to the press, even though many Republicans on the condition of anonymity spoke to the press and any one of them could have leaked the story. But Marjorie is trying to, I guess, keep the beef going by accusing Bobo of leaking the fact that Marjorie called her a bitch, I guess. I'm not sure, but here's what she said in a Fox News interview. According to CNN, Daily Beast, and others, uh, you accused your Republican colleague, Lauren Boebert, on the House floor of stealing or copying your impeach Biden resolution and then uh, called her a nasty little bitch. And I only use that word because you've confirmed it. Is this the media loving a cat fight? Because you haven't exactly shied away from this. Well, you know, I find it unfortunate that Lauren Boebert leaked that uh, conversation that we had to the press. Um, but once she leaked it out, I, I had to confirm that that's, in fact, what I said. Um, but here's the real issue. I've introduced articles of impeachment, and each time I do so, along with my other bills, I communicate with all of my Republican colleagues and ask for support by asking their co-sponsorship, because I co-sponsor many other Republicans' bills.
In order mm -hmm. to pass things on the House floor, we have to get 218 votes. And that means that we have to work together. I had asked her to co-sponsor my articles of impeachment against Joe Biden on the border, and she never responded and, and apparently refused to do so. Then when she introduced her own and forced them to the floor with a privilege resolution without even having the courage to talk to any other Republican in our conference before doing so, except Speaker McCarthy and, and apparently a few others, um, yeah, we had a tense conversation when she confronted me about things I had said about it. It is so sad that both of these imbeciles have so much power when clearly they don't care about anything but their own careers and themselves. I mean, wouldn't you run for Congress if you wanted to help people make the country a better place? No, they're just there for purposes of self-aggrandizement. And even though it's funny and we laugh at them, it is really sad, right? But after another blow up, because again, this is not the first time that these two have argued. There was reportedly a spat between them in a bathroom. Um, but it seems as if this was a little bit too far. Freedom Caucus, uh, they implicitly took Boebert's side and they held a vote on Marjorie Taylor Greene's future with them. And as Olivia Beavers of Politico reports, House Freedom Caucus members took a momentous vote Friday on Marjorie Taylor Greene's future with the group, according to three people familiar with the matter. But it's not yet clear whether she's been officially rejected. While her formal status in the conservative group remains in limbo, the 8 a.m. Friday vote, which sources said ended with a consensus against her, points to at least continued strong anti-green sentiment yeah and what's interesting about this is that the freedom caucus consists of the most insufferable people not just in congress but in the country arguably but even they're saying we're just tired of marjorie green's bullshit now to be fair there's a couple of reasons why they would vote to purge one of their own members first and foremost if somebody is inactive within the caucus they would vote them out but i don't think that that's the reason because the second reason that they would vote to purge someone is if one member is at odds with others within the group and clearly green is constantly beefing not just with bobo but with other members of the freedom caucus but since she had another spat with bobo that was public that makes them all look worse than they usually do well that probably made them mad and on top of that you know she's been in support of mccarthy where a lot of the caucus is at odds with mccarthy so they've probably been fed up with her for a while and this latest blow up with bobert was probably the straw that broke the camel's back but even though we're not sure what the outcome of that vote was and whether or not she'll be removed, at least at the time that I record this video, uh, it is clear that Marjorie Taylor Greene does feel like everyone is out to get her. And I say this because she made a tweet today stating that she believes strongly that she's being spied on by her TV. And um, she thinks that this is maybe a nefarious plot. Let me tell you what she wrote here. Last night in my DC residence, the television turned on. <laughs> The television turned on by itself, and the screen showed someone's laptop trying to connect to the TV. Just for the record, <laughs> I'm very happy. I'm also very <laughs> I'm also very happy and eat well and exercise a lot. I don't smoke and never have. I don't take any medications. I'm not vaccinated. <laughs> so, so I'm not concerned about blood clots, heart conditions, strokes, or anything. <laughs> or anything else nor do i have anything to hide i just love my country and the people and know how much they've been screwed over by the corrupt people in our government and i'm not willing to be quiet about it or willing to go along with it i don't even know what to say at least if she suddenly disappears we'll all know that it wasn't because she was vaccinated because she was not vaccinated this woman is mentally ill okay Thanks for the uh, information, Marjorie. Listen, we should all be concerned with privacy, especially after the Snowden revelations. But all of these conservatives who claim that vaccines are installing tracking devices in all of us or their toasters are spying on them, they never think about the fact that they have cell phones with them, which pose the greatest security risk because they have GPS devices within them. The government can in theory, track your location always. I just don't understand why they point to like their TV turning on by itself or some other dumb things like vaccines when the phones are something that they should get rid of if they're really that concerned, right? And again, we all should be concerned, but 
It's the phones, not your TV dummy. But regardless, as Matt Bender pointed out, one of Marjorie Taylor Greene's neighbors accidentally tried to screencast to the wrong TV, so naturally her first thought is that this means someone is trying to assassinate her. Of course, because literally everything is a conspiracy theory to someone like her, who suffers from main character syndrome to perhaps the worst extent ever. And let me just say that people like her, they could be using their position of power, Bobert too, to be fair, to actually make a difference in the lives of their constituents. They could fight for higher wages, healthcare, anything to better the lives of the people that they are supposed to be representing in theory, but instead, She's in Congress purely for self-aggrandizing reasons, and she's not alone here. Many of them are just power-hungry sociopaths. But still, to constantly make yourself the main character in Congress and instigate spats over a useless impeachment resolution that isn't going to go anywhere, there's just something especially pathetic about that. But I won't pretend that I'm surprised because when our country elects a bunch of clowns, none of us should be surprised when the clowns turn Congress into a circus. That's what we're seeing right now, folks. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Vagina. <laughs> <laughs>